Welcome to Nobby on Cars. This is the MG4 and I'm filming this video with you today as a full-time YouTuber. That's my job right now. How cool is that? And thank you for your support because you've helped make it happen. So there's a couple of ways you can support the channel. One is by subscribing and if you really like the content, you can go on to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Nobby on Cars. Nice one. Very interesting car. Starts officially from 27, 28,000, but when you add on delivery charges and all that stuff, you're, you are closer to 30,000 euro. But all that said, this is a fully electric car from MG for about 30 grand, brand new. And it'll do a range of somewhere between 350, low, low 300s, and up to 450 kilometers. That's the official range. If you go for the cheapest option in the car, you get a lithium ion phosphate battery, which means it's more likely to enjoy being charged to 100% all the time. It's the same type of chemicals in a battery that they put into the entry level Tesla Model 3 as of the start of last year. Now, I've driven this car on motorways, so I can give you real world what it's like on a motorway if you're gonna use this car for that kind of driving, and also if you do lots of around town, what's the efficiency like in that? Don't know about you, but it's a good looking car. Like the MG5, maybe not so much, but this thing is a little cracker. Lovely groove in the bonnet here. You've got really bright LED lights there, auto headlights in this model, so they'll flick up onto high beam on country roads. Gray is kind of a nice color, I think, because you have a little bit of blending going on for the plastics. The uh, orange color is obviously very eye-catching, but you might want everyone to know where you are at every minute of any given day. Alloys on this particular model, it is sitting on 17 inch alloys, although they're not actually alloys, they're, they can peel away, but it looks like them. And if you curb one, it's a lot cheaper to sort. Uh, it's, it's a low enough down car, but it's kind of got a skateboard design in the sense of wheels are right at the edge, plenty of room inside the car. Now we've had a first look video review of the MG4 back in, oh God, I think it was October 2022 hit that link if you want to see it in first impression detail. This one is a bit more about the things that kind of annoy me and the things that I love about the car because I've had a longer uh, trip with it this week. Sticking on that darker colour, you won't notice the plastic down here as much either and that's kind of nice. Now on this higher spec model, you have blind spot, you have keyless, you have reversing cameras, not on the entry level model. There's still no rear wiper on the car and that might bother you as well. There's vehicle to load on it, but it's quite slow. Uh, it'll do not even full seven kilowatt charging on a wall box. It's like the high six kilowatts. Huge big boot spoiler that does help with aerodynamics and efficiency. And the boot has a lovely red strip right along the back. It's really not a bad looking little car at all. It is a car that you can compare with the Cooper Bourne and the ID3 and stuff like that. Um, the boot is a bit smaller though. It's 363 liters, I think, under here. There's tire gunk, a compressor, and a warning triangle if you break down, which hopefully you won't. So there's not much space for storing stuff down there, but MG do give you a nice bag that you can take with you when you're shopping, if you like, into Lidl, and you can also type, keep your Type 2 cable in there. Bright white LED lights. I love to see that, because the amount of cars that cost more than this, that have big yellow halogen bulbs today, even in the boot. Uh, it doesn't have an electric uh, boot on it, but it does have, probably can't see it, a seven year warranty. So I'll start with things in the back that I like. It's got a flat floor. It's got a charging port, so people in the back can charge iPads and phones. Great leg room. There's really not a huge amount to complain about. There isn't a light in the back of the car, like one of these lights for when people are getting out of the dark. That's a bit annoying. There's also no armrest, and the rear view window isn't huge, but if you go for the higher spec models, you get that camera. And then onto the front, think of like what Tesla have in their Model S. There's a big area here that you can, I'm not actually going to compare an MG4 to a Tesla, but you, you know what I mean. Extra space down here, extra space down here for cups. Two charging cables are hidden down here. They're kind of annoying to find the first time, but you can loop them through this pad as well. And the thing about that pad is you put your phone on it and it charges, but it slides. So if you go around any sort of a bend in normal driving, that thing, is doing that all day long. So I've actually just stuck it in the cable and kept the phone down here. Now the other thing about the cable is if you want to use CarPlay, you have to use a USB charger uh, port uh, cable. Uh, if you use your normal USB-C cable, which most phones are coming with these days, you just plug it into a charging port in the car. It won't work with CarPlay. 
that's a little bit annoying. It's fine, but it's, so there's no button to start the motor in this car. So you hit P with your foot in the brake to park it and kind of turn off the motor. Same into D to drive, but it never works first time. So I have to put my foot in the brake twice and release it to slip it into D. I would just love a stop start button. MG, I'd, I'd love it. I know it's too late. I know you're not going to listen to me, but I would like it. I do like this little net here for storing another phone, armrest. Really, the storage areas are, are quite good, but they'd want to be because that uh, area for, you could probably get, I don't know, you can't change the contact pad for the wireless. I was going to say, could you get something for your phone that stops it slipping and sliding, because that would be nice. Like the steering wheel, two spoke, flat bottomed and flat topped. Buttons on it are straightforward to use. Um, intuitively works with your radar cruise control, which sometimes, again, annoys me a little bit because if you're driving along the inside lane of the motorway and you're coming behind a truck, but there's a decent enough gap, you have it on the shortest gap setting on the radar, it will break too soon. So it thinks you're gonna hit the truck. You're really quite far away from it. And then even if you indicate and you pull out in the lane, that whole process just takes there's a little bit of a hesitancy with it. And same when something's in front of you in the overtaking lane, that moves in. It's not closing that gap quick enough when there's nothing in front of you and the person behind you is trying to see what you're listening to on the radio. Final thing that... <laughs> it's, a bit, it's more quirky than annoying. Most cars, yeah? 22 uh, degrees Celsius, temperature's fine. Hot, cold, any time of year, that's generally okay. This has to be on about 25 degrees Celsius to be warm. 24 sort of and anything below that is just too cold it's a strange one they still give you physical buttons for certain things I do wish the climate screen stayed on for a bit longer we should flick to it but there's buttons for auto and heated seats and heated steering wheel they're all there it's kind of easy enough to use it's definitely better than the other MG infotainment systems that were on some of the earlier cars but it's not perfect. Other thing that's strange is if you put your headlights on manually, so let's say during the day you want them on, if you lock the car, they stay on. They don't go off. I can't understand that. It's, uh, it's a little bit weird. A couple of cool things with the car when it comes to charging. If you plug it in, it'll preheat the battery to improve efficiency. There's five drive modes. Entry level car is just over 50 kilowatt hour battery. The longer range is 64 kilowatt hours. That's the one that they say is good for 450 kilometers. I take a little bit off that. Like when I was doing a motorway drive the other day from Athlone to Dublin, uh, I used 50% range driving. I think it's about 140 kilometers, but I'd used over 200 kilometers of actual range in the car. And I know that can improve then if you're driving slower back around city center environments, but it is something to just take note of. Not exclusive to the MG4. It's pretty much every EV on the market. So you've got one version that is about 170 brake horsepower just under it and then one that's over 200. Rear wheel drive in both cars, 50-50 weight distribution, so it's actually great crack to drive. So it's got a five star NCAP safety rating and it does weigh over two tonnes, so it's not a light car. Again, not exclusive to this particular EV, but when you look at the size of it, you wouldn't think the gross weight is over two tonnes. It'll do up to 135 kilowatt charging. Now I got onto a fast charger this week with it, I think I got to about 85 kilowatt. For those of you familiar with Ballymount in Dublin off the M50, you can now pay to go there. It debits your card, if you're gonna do it that way, with 30 euro, and it's, I think, 77 cent a kilowatt hour. So you can work out how much it's gonna cost you. I spent about a tenner. It took me less than 10 minutes, and I got over 100 kilometers, I think it was. Doors in the car are really solid, really heavy. They kind of give me a German feel, actually, just the clunk even they make. If it's that over-engineered or just a bit of marketing, I'm not sure, but I'm convinced. Seating position is quite low down, but there's plenty of adjustability. If you, again, if you're in the higher spec model, you get an electrically adjustable seat in the driver's seat, but not elsewhere in the car. But come on, the price, you know? Um, so the regen works away in the background by itself. There's no paddles as such to start messing around with that. Um, but you can change it via the screen here. Just it's a bit trickier to do it. I'm on level three and it wouldn't be one pedal, but it's not, not far off it, like it's doable. Uh, now on motorways, it's between sort of 25, 27 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That's about two miles, if you're watching that in the UK, um, per kilowatt hour. But it's cold. It's still, you know, very early springtime. Some days it's been freezing coming out to the car in the morning. It's 12 degrees now. 
when you put your foot down, there's a nice surge of power. It's never kind of left struggling for it. One of the big selling points of the MG4 is just how well it handles. You can push it through corners. There's a real rear wheel drive fun factor going on when you do that. So I've no complaints in that regard at all. Uh, the centre console kind of hits off your knee depending on where you're putting it. Again, if you're doing that longer motorway, long range driving, might annoy you a bit. You just stick on your radar cruise and it works away. Seats are reasonably comfortable, there's no lumbar support in them uh, and plenty of storage for a driver for bottles of water uh, large bottles of water will go into the door bins so you know it's really kind of perfectly fine, perfectly comfortable armrest doesn't adjust in that sense but it's at a decent level for someone of my height anyway not quite 6 foot, about 5 foot 10 and um, yeah blind spot and all the extra bits kind of just make it an easier car to drive. It is worth noting, obviously, if you go for the entry level, things like the cameras aren't on the car and they do help. So I don't want to say it's a case of you get what you pay for, but there are some things that you have to sacrifice if you're going for the cheaper version of the MG4. I would like to see that range a good bit down into the mid to high teens and I haven't necessarily seen it be that way this week. Again, it could be down to temperature, it could be my right foot. But if you have an MG4, would you please comment below and let people know what kind of range you're getting and what sort of energy consumption you're getting, whether that's you watching the UK with your miles per kilowatt hour or um, kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers, if you're watching that, where we do things a little bit differently, but more of us do things a little bit differently. Anyway, um, I'm, I'm happy enough really with how it drives. It's just a couple of quirks that go on in the car that I just felt were kind of worth pointing out and things that I didn't really pick up because the last time I had the car for I think an hour and a half but I've had more time to it. I think even the niggly bits as much as they're, they're you know like, oh why doesn't do this you just keep saying to yourself yeah but what did it cost you and when you think of a lot of the mainstream best-selling electric cars that are on the market right now in some cases they're nearly double the price of one of these and it's an awful lot to think about uh, when you're trying to put your money up or you want to go EV you really do but you're like I can't afford to spend 55, 60 grand on an electric car but if something was around 30 oh, I'm a bit more interested now so would I recommend you buy an MG4? I'd definitely say have a look. I don't think I'd ever really say just go straight up and buy a car. See if it suits your needs. It's got a lot of space for the size of it. The price is really the, the point that's hard to argue with. To get something similar from Volkswagen and a lot of those brands who are doing really good option EVs right now, and Kia and stuff, it's gonna cost you significantly more to buy it. And the fact that they're throwing in a seven year warranty into this thing as well is really quite interesting. Uh, I got talking to a taxi driver the other day in an MG5, I think he was on his second one of them, and he was asking all about this, and maybe the boot wouldn't be big enough for him and his needs, but he loved the brand, he'd done him nothing wrong in the two uh, vehicles he's had so far, and as I said, he did the third one on order. So feedback from customers seems to be very, very good. And again, just if you wanna get into the EV bracket of vehicle but you don't have Tesla type, type money then MG really are putting something on the table that's very very interesting indeed thank you so much for coming with us this far in the video again if you'd like to subscribe or hit up uh, buymeacoffee.com forward slash nobby on cars to help support this fully independent channel this is my full-time job right now thank you very much for watching